So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. And welcome back to another one of those In Pieces series. This is us doing Silent Night, the remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night from 2012. Um, on this episode, we are doing minutes 70 through 75. For those out there that are like, what happens, minutes 70 through 75? Well, it's basically Santa Claus being walked to the prison cells is how it will open. And this is going to close with a deputy maniacally smiling as she's remembered um, the answer to a crossword puzzle. So, (laughs) as you do, the gift that keeps on giving. Speaking about the gift that keeps on giving, joining me on this episode is my longtime friend, collaborator, and just general guy that is awesome, one Mr. Ricky Morgan. Welcome back. Ho, 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 sluts. Welcome to Silent Night, Dead of Night Remake, which I like to call um, loosely Halloween 2. Yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of a couple of distinct artistic choices in this one where we're like, like because when you watch Silent Night, Dead Lady, it's not that difficult a movie to remake. Yeah. This one's like that. Nope. <laughs> What's that playbook? <laughs> Out the window you go. Um <laughs> It's, it's, it's bonkers, but it's bonkers in the best possible way. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible movie, but I kind of love it for all the all the missteps that it does. It's like kind of prime fodder for for ridicule and endlessly entertaining. Like, say what you yeah. want about the movie, and there's plenty to say about it negatively. It gives you a lot of death, um, and it's very, very, very mean spirited in a kind of mm-hmm. campy, fun way. Plus, Malcolm McDill doesn't know where his character's from, and that's <laughs> yeah. like that is one of those like amazing gifts where you're like, "That is he English? Is he American? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> if he is American, what part of America is he from?" Um, it's just terrible. Uh, <laughs> in the, in the best way. You, however, one well, you're going to be on for two segments, but we might as well break this down because that second segment may have already come out already because of the way I released these Mm -hmm. Um, somehow in the last two of these NPC series you've landed the last segment and the last segment has been predominantly credits (laughs) well it makes my job easier so yeah uh, Yeah, you don't really have to worry about too much save the best for last (laughs) (laughs) You, you do get the reveal of the killer in your other segment and it's not even yep. as bad as a Scooby Doo reveal. It's a, like, oh, I've never seen this character ever in this movie. Um, right. Great. Oh, it was him. It was it was old Jonesy, the lighthouse keeper. Um, you know what I mean? It's like, what are we doing? Anyway, anyway, let's let's get to this one here. Tons of dialogue, a little bit of death, but 
as I was just saying before I hit the record here, um, this one has my favourite monologue, which I'm very much looking forward to reading through because it makes me smile. Uh, I use it almost every Christmas now on one of the episodes on Podcast Under the Stairs as an intro in because it's just fucking great. Um, but before we swing into that though, Ricky, you, you, I mean, I know you'd seen this movie before. When was the last time you'd seen it? Last night. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I breezed back through it last night, and I was like, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> oh, there's the antlers, yeah. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's, there's, there's the young kid with his granddad. <laughs> like, which, yeah. um, why is that scene in this movie? I'd uh, forgotten about when they're doing the parade, you know, you got all the chaos going on, and, yep. the, and the, 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 yeah, the... The, you know, he's up there on the sled and he points out where the Santa Claus is running. I was yeah. like, oh man, I forgot about that. What are we doing? Um, ho, 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 that what? way! <laughs> <laughs> so, Santa is being led to the cells here at the start. And um, he's just been asked the question from Malcolm McDowell's character, where he was in 2008. His answer is, probably some crotch-ridden town like this. It's a charming Santa. Um... And McDowell, unsure of what his accent should be, goes, Deputy. And um, our deputy protagonist here says, Otesca, Montana, which I'm assuming is a place. But sure. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't, like, I don't know if Cryer is a place either, but I'm like, I'm just going to... I always assume when places are mentioned in movies in America, they just exist. So uh, You know, it's 50-50. I it's mean, 50-50. <laughs> you never can tell. McDill says, does that ring a bell in that dumb skull of yours yet? And Santa <laughs> says, I, I love, the, I can never remember the, remember the name of this actor, but he's a great actor. Mm-hmm. Um, he usually plays villains, um, but they really have given him an incredible script to read from. They've, they've kind of not given anyone else an incredible script. But they've Remember given back him... in back in the MTV days, back in the 90s, he was the cab driver that was in all the commercials. Oh right! I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, it's kind of, you know that that's kind of where he got his start, uh-huh. and of course it branched off into TV series and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I mean he's he's pretty solid. Yeah, he, like he's great in this role. He's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, he says my mind is blissfully bereft of the effects of campanology. Um, to which McDowell says, "Well, four people were murdered right there on Christmas Eve. Cops <laughs> never found the killer." And he's like, oh, judicial ineptness. It's a curse. I fucking weep. And he says, well, six people died here tonight. I ask you, what are the chances? Now, Ricky, I'm going to swing it at this monologue because I need to get out of my system. It's going to make me feel better. And then we can talk about it because it is really just like nail on the head of a better Santa. Um, He makes bad Santa look like good Santa. Um, He says, I'd say the odds are pretty high. And then McDill's like, ugh, it starts walking away. He goes, because it's that time of the year, Sheriff. Yeah, Christmas, when people go off the dead end, at the deep end. You know why? Because they spend too much, and they drink too much, and they eat too much, and they think too much, and they look around at all this fake fun and happy laughter, and they go, where the fuck is my cup of joy, huh? Where's my figgy pudding? Where's my stocking full of gifts? Where's my Calvin Klein underwear and my TV cable? My replica Tim Tebow NFL jersey. Where's my fancy cologne? Where's my gift wrap not wear Rockwell wife? And my beautiful smiling happy children. Where? Nowhere. Where are my friends? My beaming friends who worship the fucking ground I walk on because I've had an awesome fucking year, man. And it doesn't take too much to put people over the edge. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Just a dirty look or a bad word or a TV too loud, or some asshole leaning on their horn. Ring, ring, it's a telemarketer, give me money for Haiti, or the Democrats on National Suck My Dick Week. It's the most wonderful fucking time of the year. But whatever it is you think I did, I most certainly did not. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Santa. Who the fuck you think I am? Charles Manson? It's just, it's the, it's the distilled anger of a very, very, very bitter asshole <laughs> best, best dialogue this side of Clark Griswold <laughs> no 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 we're all in this together <laughs> hallelujah holy shit give yeah. me the talent 
<laughs> oh, I, I, like that's one of my I, I, like just a sidetrack and talk about an infinitely better film. Um, like uh, that's my Christmas Eve movie every year as I'm prepping yeah. like stuff for dinner the following day is always National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I have to do it. Like ha- have to do it. And I know some people nowadays are kind of oh well, it's not that great. And it's no, no, no. Shut your shut your mouth. It's that's f- right. It's shut fucking it. amazing. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. But yeah, it like, goes now. Let's just say this Santa was on the stand, and this was he's got like he's defending himself, and this is his closing argument. Do do the jury go? You know what? Innocent. <laughs> like, yeah, right? Yeah. Look, I feel sorry for this guy. Um, I mean, it's it's convincing to an extent that it shows that the guy is genuinely aggrieved to be in prison, but at the same time. I don't know if this plays the same card very well. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, though, I mean, you, you could... And again, it's 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 the actor here, right? Because you see it slowly build as yeah. he's getting through this dialogue. And it just and then he has that point where he, he regresses back and, mm-hmm. and then, you know, that's when he turns around and gets the handcuffs taken off. And, and I don't know. It's, it's just... Well, it's the best part of the movie, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> yeah. It's like, notwithstanding some of the amazing cheesy deaths in here this is the high water mark of silent night yeah. <laughs> like, this is, yeah. like, whoever wrote this dialogue here was having a bad day this is written by like uh, 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 michael douglas just right after falling down <laughs> right, he's, yeah. like, he's like Man, you know what i'm, I'm like, this is this is what i think about christmas um <laughs> Yeah, just after that argument about breakfast at McDonald's, we've all been there. Um, right. <laughs> so we we kind of go to the station, and the deputy is clearly, clearly letting all this sink in. And she's like, "I just don't understand how he did it. How right. do you go from hearing kids' wishes to going on a killing spree? It just doesn't make sense." And sarcastic Malcolm McDowell, who only has sarcasm all the way through this movie. Everything he says is least is dripping with with sarcasm, which I don't think is in the script. I just think he doesn't want to be in this movie. Right. And he's like, I'm fucking, if I'm going to say this, I'm saying it's sassy. He says, I, I told you before, murder seldom does. I want you to go and look for that other girl from the motel and see if you can find any more evidence. You're good at that. Um, and he says, uh, Giles and I, the, the, my autocorrect here is terrible. It's, it's supposed to say Giles and I will man the fort. Uh, for some reason it says Giles and I will man the fort. Um, <laughs> that's even better. <laughs> which, that's a different movie. Um, uh, and then we, we, we transition away from there. Um, she, she arrives at the motel and she sees this Carson guy who's been... A, a relative red herring throughout this movie. He mm-hmm. was the kind of lead suspect earlier on for Malcolm McDowell. We'd had a kind of run in with him earlier on in the bar where he basically admitted to rape. <laughs> yeah. And I love the fact that, I mean, how obvious is it too? Because they even write his name on the wall, right? On mm-hmm. the chalkboard, and you're like underlining. <laughs> yeah. This is Carson. This is Carson. It's with- this guy. I know yeah. it is. The two S's. Um, <laughs> Well, double S, my ass. Um, so yeah, like she sees him come out of one hotel room and go into another, which apparently, from her point of view, makes him guilty. <laughs> like of <Sure>. something. Yeah. <laughs> How's this Santa got two hotel rooms? Um, so she goes up. She pulls a gun on him. She says, "Turn around, turn around now. Show me your hands." And I've written here, Carson pulls a buffalo bill. Yeah. When he kind of sneakily, he's just missing the business cards that he can drop to the side to run and get his gun. Um, he's like, uh, and he turns around and he pulls a gun on her. He says, don't make me laugh. We both know you don't have it in you. Which this movie has spent, at this point, an hour and 15 minutes telling you she won't pull the trigger. She's not got it in her. She can't do it. We all know that. Um, and he goes to shoot in slow motion, which is a big mistake. Yep. She right. pulls the trigger. There's a sound effect of a roaring lion <laughs> over the gunshot. <laughs> I'm not sure why. <laughs> like if she suddenly got the eye of the tiger or something. Um, but this hits Carson like right between the eyes. And this is a frustrating thing about this movie. It's predominantly practical effects. Like we get like a great 
blood spray out the back yeah. on the wall, and as he's fallen down, there's a like a, another kind of like splurge, kind of phantasm esque of blood that yeah. kind of comes out the back of his head as he, he lies on the ground. And they they put the time and effort into that in this movie. It's just a shame they didn't do it with anything else. Um, yeah. And like as as this is kind of as he's on the ground dead the camera slowly draws over to a car air freshener which is shaped like a snowflake and the deputy mutters a six-sided item snowflake which is a reference to the crossword she was doing with her dad earlier and she smiles (laughs) and that's the end of the five minutes and i mean it's got a great central bit of dialogue but There's not a lot happens in this. This is really padding things out to get to the end at this point. Right, right. We're, we're trying to rush through. I mean, besides besides the dialogue scene, the rest of this is just trying to. Well, you got to start knocking these people off because you got to get down to the main person. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I love the fact that when she, you know, tells him to raise his hands, raise your hands so I can see him, and he <laughs> poses like a solid gold dancer. You know. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, because that's when he whips out the gun, and I thought, yeah, here we go. He's going to shoot himself. That's what I was hoping for, yeah. but nah, we didn't get that, so. It's got a gun! Um, it's got a gun! <laughs> but this time he actually did have a gun. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's like you see, if we get rid of the Carson character, then that's one less red herring now. I mean, right. it maybe is the guy in the prison, but we don't think it is the guy in the prison. So when Santa Killer is still alive, who is the Santa Killer? Like I've said before, the movie, and we're going to touch on it in your next recorded segment, which once again may have already been released. It's a touch. nobody. Yeah, yeah, right. It's it's a it's a not, like you've never seen this character before. It's two steps away from being the original um, My Bloody Valentine, right? Where the guy leaves right at the start, and like, oh, yeah, I'm going away fishing. And like, bye, Bill. And then at the end of the movie, it was Bill all along. He didn't go fishing. Um, you know, it's like <laughs> is that the, that's the prowler, isn't it? Oh, it's the prowler, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. the prowler. It's not like, but they're all the same. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they all they all come from the same cup. Um, you're pulling back. You're pulling back the curtain, ducking of your own show. You yeah, this uh, show uh, and you're oh, revealing shit. the curtain. They're all the same. They're all the same. These bloody horror movies. You start to sound them. like me now. I've already <laughs> seen it. Just a different costume. <laughs> I mean, like the, like I said earlier, like the Halloween 2 thing, because, I mean, well, even Halloween 1, because there's a scene where Santa looks at somebody and he does the head tilt. Yeah. He picks he picks her up on the wall like Michael Myers. It's like, okay, all right. I see where we're going here. Yeah, it's, it's very much like they've, the, by this point, since it's 2012, we've already had those Halloween reboots, um, right. the Rob Zombie ones. So if we, we are, wanted them or not, right. <laughs> yeah, we like we are just like we are just pushing forward with uh yeah we can because we're, we're we're past the initial burst of remakes, <clears throat> so we've already had things like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and mm-hmm. The Hitcher and Friday the Thirteenth and, and, and whatnot and Nightmare on Elm Street. This is a kind of it's, it's the the frustrating thing for me about it is at its core, it could be a pretty interesting movie if it wasn't yeah. just. You know, the, like, see if you like, I don't want to be one of these assholes that's like just change the name, because um, they kind of did. But it's just called Silent Night, so they removed right. the Deadly Night from it. But it's a, a remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night. But the idea of this is set during a Santa Con, and the killer dresses like Santa is brilliant. It's like you say, it's like the Halloween yeah. thing. Like Michael yeah. Myers is walking around on Halloween night in a costume. Everyone else is dressed in a costume. So how yep. do you know who the killer is? So it's 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 like smart on that mm-hmm. level. It is just really poorly written. <laughs> like it's yeah. just really, really and it's also one of those examples of what we keep talking about as far as why I keep remaking Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the Thirteenth. Here's a movie that you could legitimately take the 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 nucleus of what yep. made this movie interesting to begin with and make a legit version. But there yep. you go. We we failed on that too so yeah we shortcut it we shortcut him we get malcolm mcdowell in it because at this point 
he needs a new swimming pool or there's like some backdated like tax he has to pay or something he's like i need to do this movie I'm not gonna be happy about it um but i'm gonna do this movie because like i, I like I've mentioned i mentioned a couple of other recordings i think it's easy to forget in the same way a lot of people are like oh donald pleasance or oh, the guy from halloween it's very easy to forget that like these guys have huge careers of right. incredible performances behind yeah. them and that's not to take anything away from their horror acting by any stretch of the imagination but like there is that thing of um, established well kind of trodden actors eventually end up in their careers doing horror movies because no yeah. one will cast them in anything else and horror movies will do anything to get people to watch their movies and that includes right. you know bankable old names and that, but that's that thing that we end up loving about these people, even though they 100%. make the bad stuff. Christopher Lee, Michael Caine. I mean, you know, you know, I mean, you know. Again, it goes down to you know, Christopher Lee and and the, and the Howling too. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, not want does not want to be there, but there you go. You know. <laughs> not only does he not want to be there, I think it was his, one of his least favorite movies he ever made, um, well, and he was quite vocal about it as well. And I'm like, that, nah, but you did. This is like Michael Caine making that uh, the, the what was it the fourth Jaws movie, right? Um, and basically saying he'd never been to the Bahamas, and that was literally <laughs> it. That's why yeah, I will do this horrible movie that will do nothing because it gets me a chance to go to the Bahamas for a couple of weeks. I've never been there. It's a bucket list. Um, and oh. I, I, I kind of like that. As, as the John Carpenter thing of, yeah, right. like, what happens when someone remakes my movie? I, I check just I get a check. in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep playing games. <laughs> and I love that. I love that. Um, Ricky, you're a busy guy. You do stuff. Let yeah. the listeners out there know where they can check out your stuff, buddy. Uh, I've got a show called uh, Whose Ass Is It? And uh, you can... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I just I, I describe yeah. a person's ass, and you have to decide whose ass it is I'm talking about. No, like that's like the thing we joke about that, but if that is not a podcast by the end of the month, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I've got uh, Doctor Movie still going on, where I'm cranking out three or four episodes a week uh, while driving my car back and yeah. forth to work. Uh, I don't recommend doing that yourself, but I'm a daredevil, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Still got Hail Ming hanging out there. I haven't heard from Danny in a while. He's been pretty busy with reconstructing his house. Mm. I think they had some issues, so he's been busy. But we still got the we still got the flag raised, so mm-hmm. we're trying to defend the castle. But we'll uh, <laughs> we'll get back on track eventually. But uh, that's kind of it. That's that's kind of where I'm sticking right now. I've been working on another project. We'll see if it works out or not. But I'm excited about it. But it may be a workload that I might got can handle. I don't yeah. know. We'll find out. But but yeah, Doctor Movie is the main thing I got kind of rolling right now, and that's on Legion. You can find it anywhere that you type in, you know, wherever you listen to podcasts. So, yep, that's uh, that's kind of where I'm sitting, man. And anytime that I can be on a show with Duncan, I'm I'm there. So, oh well, the next one of these um, will be recording end of January, released in February, and it's on Maniac Cop. So. <laughs> yeah, of course, yes. Yeah. So, um, and maybe I'll get the credits on that one. Too. <laughs> See if you get the credits on that one. Like I, let's see, if you get the credits on that, I will swap it with something I get. As a slip, like, because you're not getting credits in three episodes. Uh, right, ladies and gents, thank you very much for checking out this episode. We are dropping an episode every single day of this month from the 1st of December to the 24th. So we'll be back with something tomorrow.